Every week we bring you brand new recipes that we have fallen in love with, but at the end of each quarter or so, we like to rate those and tell y'all our top five. So today we are gonna be doing a best of winter dinners. This is gonna be June, July, August, and most of September of 2022. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Okay, this time when we were going back through all of the recipes we've made, three of the five are subby suppers, which means three of those recipes came from y'all. Coming in at number five is a subby supper. This is a deconstructed taco stuffed peppers. We served it over rice. It was so delicious. It makes me kind of want to make it again. I'm going to get started by starting on the rice. One little tip, if you have some chicken broth, instead of just boiling your rice in water, boil it in chicken broth. I only had a cup left, so I'm going to do one cup of water, one cup of chicken broth. That'll just give it just a little extra flavor. I really don't have a lot of chopping to do. Her recipe that she sent me did not have an onion, but we love onion, so I'm going to add that in. But I've just got this one bell pepper that I need to dice. I'm not chopping up the entire onion. Not even quite half, but I just want to have that onion flavor in there. So I was over there chopping and my rice boiled over, but that's okay. We've got it under control now. <laughs> I've got this large skillet heated to about medium high heat and we are going to add one pound of ground beef. So here you can season your ground beef if you would like. I'm just going to add just a little bit of garlic powder, not a lot, because we're gonna be adding taco seasoning later, and I know that has a lot of salt and it has garlic powder, it has all kinds of great spices in it, but it's up to you how you wanna season your beef. Now that our beef is almost cooked through, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our diced onion and bell pepper. Now I'm adding in one can of black beans that I did drain and rinse, one can of rotel, I did not drain it, you can add in as much taco seasoning as you prefer. I've got maybe a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. And at this point, you would add in corn as well. I thought I had corn on hand. I do not. So there's that. Okay, there's not a lot of liquid in here. So, and don't get me wrong, there's not supposed to be a lot of liquid, but I'm just going to add just a little bit of water that I added to the rotel here. Just so this can simmer for a good five minutes while our rice is finishing up. Okay, we have two minutes left on the rice. It's getting there. And y'all almost let me forget the best part, hello, is the cheese. I already had this on hand or else I would just shred my own, but since I have this, we're gonna use this. Calls for a half a cup of cheese to go in here. I'll probably do that and then we'll probably put more cheese on top when we serve it because. Do you want some cheese? You do? Yeah, okay, hold on. I said hold on. Ma'am. I'm coming with the cheese. It's coming. I told you. Y'all, I'm really excited right now. My rice is done, and you know what I just found in my fridge? I have one lime left. So I'm gonna add some lime juice to both this dish and to our rice just for a little more flavor. So he went into the office today. He just walked in the door and this yeah. was on the table waiting for him. Man, it smells delicious. <laughs> oh yeah. It's looking good. That's delicious. Wait, hold up. Stop. Now, commence. I meant to grab that earlier. I couldn't believe this could get any better. <laughs> Classic Tex-Mex flavors right here. It's so good. Does not disappoint. Cilantro, yeah. sour cream. Yeah. Wow. This is a repeat, or this is gonna be on repeat in mm. our house. I can see me making this numerous times. Carly, you rock. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. At number four, we are rating the Italian chicken orzo. It was almost, I don't wanna say it was a disaster. You'll see when you see the video, but um, the carrots did not get quite soft enough. So when I make this again, I'll just keep that in mind that that needs to cook a little bit longer. But other than that, the flavors of this put it in our top five. So I have a couple of carrots, about a half an onion, and one squash in here. The recipe calls for a zucchini, but I had a squash on hand. And then this is one red bell pepper chopped. And I might have a little too much chicken. It calls for about a pound. These are two chicken breasts from my butcher box, but they were quite large, so I mean, extra protein, right? Okay, to get started, I've got my large skillet here. I'm gonna heat it to about medium high heat. 
and I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. While we let our skillet heat up, I've got my chicken here. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of this pesto in there. Now we'll need a couple more tablespoons later, but for now, we're just gonna toss this chicken in about a tablespoon. I'll do maybe a generous tablespoon of this pesto since I have a lot of chicken. Okay, now that our skillet has heated up, we are going to add in all of our chicken as well as our zucchini or squash, onion and carrots. We're just gonna saute all of this together for about three to five minutes, and then we will add in some other ingredients. Now that that's been sauteing for about five minutes, I'm gonna add in our one red bell pepper that I've chopped, one cup of dry orzo pasta, and a couple of teaspoons of minced garlic. We're just gonna saute this for another two minutes. Okay, now we're gonna add in a can of crushed tomatoes. This is a 14 and a half ounce can. A couple more tablespoons of pesto. Two cups of low sodium chicken broth. Now I'm gonna be adding in one teaspoon of Better Than Bouillon chicken base. If you don't have that, you're just gonna up the amount of salt that you put into your dish. And then I'm adding in a quarter teaspoon each of salt and pepper and red pepper flakes, and then a half a teaspoon of dried oregano. Let's combine all of that. We're gonna bring this to a simmer, and then I'll turn the heat to about medium low, and we're gonna simmer it for eight to 12 minutes covered. We gotta let that pasta cook. One thing I forgot to mention is you wanna come in and stir this every few minutes just to make sure that your orzo is not going to burn on the bottom. Ma'am, are you offering to stir? Oh, okay. You know I have Parmesan cheese, don't you? What are we doing? What? <laughs> okay, give me a minute. <laughs> give me a second, please. There. You are a loud chewer, ma'am. Okay, it's been about 11 minutes. I want to check on, ma'am, I'm, I'm trying to film. As I was saying, I wanna check on the tenderness of the veggies as well as the doneness of our orzo. So let me take a bite. My orzo is definitely done, but my carrots are still a little crunchier than I would like, but we're just gonna to have to go with it. So my advice to you is to saute the carrots for a lot longer. So maybe just do those by themselves first or chop them even thinner than I did. I mean, I did them pretty thin slices, but that's all right. So. I do feel like it needs a little more salt and pepper, so that's what we're gonna do now. And lastly, I just took it off the stove. We're just gonna stir in some of this shredded Parmesan. You could use grated Parmesan. I just had this on hand and thought I would use it up. I'm happy, <laughs> cause I'm about to eat. So I've already forewarned him that the carrots are a little more uh, al dente. Al dente, I like al dente. <laughs> so yeah, I wish I would've softened those, but that's yeah, okay. all good. Well, it looks tremendous. Mm -hmm. mm, man, it smells good. Yeah. Got some flavors up in here. I hope so. I hope it's good. Mmm. Mmm. What was that a little jig? Man, that's good. So what man, do you think about yeah. the carrot? Like I mean it's fine to me. Yeah. It's just a little crunchy. It's cool. It's just a little al dente, but it ain't, I mean, it ain't like crunchy, crunchy. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's not too bad. Man, I love that sauce. That's really good. Thanks. It's like, it's almost like it's a little spicy, but not. I it mean, has a little red pepper flavor. Just a it. little tad bit, yeah. but not much. So if you don't want mm. any spice at all, just leave that red pepper flake out of there, but. All right, well, I'm gonna dig in. Yeah. Y'all, this might be up there as a favorite. The flavor is just so rich. It's not a heavy dish, but it's got such a rich flavor. So much flavor just kind of packed in there. It's, it's not like a it's not like a, a heavy garlicky marinara sauce. No. It's more like a a bright fiery yes. tomato sauce. It's yes. really 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 good. It's delicious. Y'all definitely need to make this 30 minute meal all in one pot or pan. Mhm. Mm it's a keeper. At number 3 is another subby supper, and this one is the southwestern sausage quiche. I've had dreams about that <laughs> since we've had it. It is so good. And of course you could do it not just for dinner. You could do it for a brunch or something, but y'all the flavors in that one. First things first, let's preheat the oven to 350. Since I am just doing the original recipe today and I'm, I'm not doubling it, 
I'm only gonna need a half a pound of this sausage. Okay, I've got this medium skillet. I'm heating it to medium high heat. We are going to brown this half a pound of sausage. While that is browning, I'm gonna go ahead and shred some cheese. You need about three fourths a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. And y'all already know who is sitting at my feet waiting. Okay, our sausage has finished browning. So we're just going to drain it here on this paper towel just to get any excess grease off. There's not a lot of grease on there. And we'll just let it sit here and cool for just a minute while we get the rest of the ingredients together. In this bowl, we're gonna add three eggs, a tablespoon of taco seasoning. I have my own homemade, but you could just use pre-made is fine. You wouldn't use the whole pack though, just a tablespoon. A fourth a cup of sour cream and a cup of heavy cream or just milk. I have heavy cream. We're gonna whisk all of this together. Let's set that to the side and assemble our quiche. Okay, I've got a nine inch deep dish pie crust here. It is frozen. You don't have to thaw it out. You're not gonna bake it first. It's all gonna bake together. On the bottom of our pie crust, let's add our half a pound of sausage. Now you're gonna add half a can of Rotel. You want to drain it first, so I already did that. Now here comes our cheese. You need about three fourths a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. You're gonna put that right on top of there. And then lastly, let's just pour on our mixture with the eggs just to make it easier to manage. I'm gonna put it on this baking dish. This is going in a preheated 350 degree oven for one hour. It has been an hour. We're gonna take this out of the oven. We're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes before we cut into it. Just wanna dive in. <laughs> I wanted to go to the table, but he said, no, I'm ready to eat now. So, oh, well, I mean, we can go to the table. Oh my gosh. Would you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat this quiche here. Oh, man. Yeah, it's got like a little spice to it. It's southwestern. Mmm. Spice, sausage, That's right. egg. Mm. Oh, he is so happy right now. That is amazing. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. I'm going to eat this whole thing. <laughs> So, Laverne, we thank you. Thank you so much. This is incre incredible. Steven walked out. He had to go get ready. This is it's a Saturday morning. It's kind of crazy around here. But I knew this would be a perfect breakfast for this morning. So I just wanted to give you all my notes on this. This is heaven. It has a tad bit of a spice, but it's not a strong spice at all. You just need to try it, okay? <laughs> you need to believe. This is incredible. <laughs> that lately you need what? to believe you need to believe it, well it's true it's true it's so good the texture of it is really great i realized after i got in the oven that i forgot to add salt and pepper it doesn't need salt and pepper it's totally fine without it it does not need it just believe as steven says it's so good thank you laverne coming in at number two is another subby supper and it is tabby's lasagna this one was the one that kind of broke the mold because steven does not like cream cheese in dinner recipes but he said this was the best lasagna I've ever made and possibly the best lasagna he's ever eaten and it has cream cheese in it, so. It was kind of neck and neck with number one. If it were up to me, I would have chosen lasagna as number one, but can you guess what number one is? We'll be back in just a second. We're gonna get started by preheating our oven to 375. We need to brown a pound of ground beef. You can do half ground beef and half Italian sausage if you have that on hand. And she just used onion powder in hers, but I'm just gonna use an onion just cause I have it on hand and I, that's really easy to do. So let's brown this along with some onion. I'm gonna season the meat with a little bit of Auntie Nono's Everything Seasoning. Tabby used garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of Italian seasoning. I'll also add in some Italian seasoning too. While this continues to brown, we're gonna go get started on another part of the lasagna. We're gonna be using this type of cheese. Now I did want to tell you, Tabby said that everyone ha who has tried her lasagna absolutely loves it, even the pickiest of picky eaters. I'm gonna start out with about four or five spoonfuls of this. I might end up using this whole thing, we'll see. Now here comes the interesting part. We're gonna whisk it with a little bit of chicken broth. She said just trust the process. <laughs> and I trust her. So we're just gonna go with it. So let's start mixing this together. It's gonna take a little while. Okay, our ground beef is done. I am going to get some of the excess grease off of here. I got most of the grease off. We're gonna add in a jar of pasta sauce. I think she used Bertoli 
I'm just using what I have on hand, which is the Rayos. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to the jar and shake it up and add that in. There we go, that gets all of our pasta sauce out. And I'm just going to mix all of this together, let it hang out on low for a few minutes while I finish up my cheese layer over there, combining that. Okay, I'm gonna start adding in some of the seasonings. We need some garlic powder. We're gonna add a little more Italian seasoning to this as well. I think I'm doing this right, Tabby, if you're yelling at the screen right now, sorry about that. We're also gonna add just a little bit of this Parmesan cheese. Let's stir all of that around. That seems about like the right consistency. Now let's just start putting it all together. To get started, I'm gonna grab some of our spaghetti sauce and put it on the bottom. This is not a nine by 13. It's like a step down, maybe an 11 by seven. We're gonna be using these oven ready lasagna noodles just because you don't have to boil them and deal with them beforehand. You can just put them straight into the casserole dish. Now we're gonna go in with our cheese mixture and try and spread that as evenly as we can. So I just went back and watched her Marco Polo. I added just a little more chicken broth to this because I feel like this was a little too thick. And at this point, she just went on in with her spaghetti sauce, but she said you could also go in with some mozzarella cheese if you wanted to. I love this creamy melt and my store only had the Italian, which has mozzarella in it, but it also has Parmesan. So. Y'all know we love cheese. I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of this cheese here before I add in my layer of spaghetti sauce. Okay, and now we just repeat these layers. A little more cheese, and Gracie is very aware of that. I'll get you, I'll get you, I promise. Give me a minute. And some more spaghetti sauce. Mm, nope, exit out of the room, thank you. Oh, out. <sighs> can't keep nothing from him. Of course he has to come in here and ruin it. Can't keep his face out of the food. <laughs> okay, and to finish up, we are just going to add this cheese all over the top. <laughs> Gracie Lou, can you get down please? Ma'am, ma'am, get back. I'm gonna give you some. And I had more of the Parmesan here ready. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit of Parmesan here on top. Now we're gonna cover this with aluminum foil. I did spray my foil first with some nonstick spray so that the cheese doesn't stick to it. And this is going in the oven at 375 for one hour with the foil on and then we'll take the foil off and let it sit in there for another 10 minutes. This just came out of the oven. We're gonna give it five to 10 minutes before we cut into it. This looks and smells amazing. Let's talk about it. First of all, oh, fix the hair, fix the hair. <laughs> Let's talk about it. He came into the kitchen while I was making it. I saw what you were doing. And he said, is that sour cream? <laughs> like hoping. I said, no, get out of here. So he's aware of what's in it. It's good. It is really good. The cream cheese, really creamy, but because of the seasonings you got in there, yeah. it doesn't have that musty okay. taste so to it. So I also mixed the cream cheese with chicken broth. Really? Really. Mm, it's got a really rich garlicky flavor. Yeah, yeah, I added a lot of garlic to it. I like the texture of it better than the ricotta cheese. It's okay. got like a, a really creamy yeah. texture smooth. to it. Yeah. Yes, very smooth. Yeah. That's a that's a good way of explaining okay. it. Okay. It's very smooth, lots of flavor. You cannot tell that it's cream cheese. Okay. Tabby, you weren't wrong. We love it. It's a grand slam. It is. I love the I love the way the cheese caramelizes on top. Yeah, little it's so little good. extra texture to the cheese there. Right, that's really good. It is really good. Thank you, Tabby. I'm so glad that you showed me how to make this and that we gave it a try and that someone approves, mm. even though it has cream cheese in it. <laughs> it's a new day over here. Did you guess it, number one, which one you think it is? It is an Asian inspired dish, which we've done several of those over the last few months. But when I asked Steven, it really was no contest, which one was his favorite, hands down, he said it was chicken lo mein. And y'all, I have to say that chicken lo mein was amazing. And he voted that that one was number one. So we went with that. It's so easy and it's so good. It tastes just like you would get at a restaurant, if not better. Okay, to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and heat up this water and we're just going to cook the noodles according to package directions. So that needs to start heating up. I've got this large skillet here. We're gonna heat it to medium high, almost to high heat. To the bottom of our large skillet, just add about a tablespoon of canola oil or olive oil, whatever you have. And we're gonna add in our thinly chopped or sliced 
chicken. So this is about a pound of chicken. It was two small chicken breasts. Along with our chicken, I'm gonna be adding in a little bit of soy sauce, some ginger paste, and some garlic. We're just gonna let this cook for four to five minutes until it's completely done, and then we'll remove the chicken out. Our pan is still pretty hot. I turned it down to about medium. I left whatever juices were behind, and then now I'm gonna throw in some shiitake mushrooms and one small onion that I diced. I'm gonna add just a lit little more oil back in here. I feel like it just needed just a little bit more of something to help it soften up. Okay, our mushrooms have got some good color on them and our onions have gotten pretty soft. So let's add in about a cup and a half of shredded cabbage and about a cup of matchstick carrots. We're gonna let this hang out for three or four minutes while we go make the sauce. You know I'm gonna double it just because we have a little more noodles and we just usually double the sauce anyway. We need chicken broth, about a half a cup, a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch, a couple of tablespoons of sesame oil, about a half a cup of soy sauce. I always use the low sodium. Now we need some brown sugar, just a couple of teaspoons. Let's just whisk all of this together. Okay, our veggies have been cooking for about three or four minutes. They seem like they're pretty perfect. So let's add in our sauce and we're gonna bring it to a bowl. Okay, this has been boiling for about a minute. It's starting to thicken. So let's add our chicken back in first. And lastly, let's add in our cooked pasta, our noodles. I did go ahead and turn off the heat as well. And that, my friends, is dinner. Oh my goodness. Chicken lo mein. Chicken lo mein. It smells just like chicken lo mein too. He said when he was in the other room, he was like, are you cooking chicken lo mein? Wow, you did it. <laughs> You did it. I'm so happy. Something is lifting up that sauce that's in there. It's probably the ginger. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I do want to recommend that you double the sauce like I did. I didn't even use all of the noodles. I left a few of the noodles behind because I felt like it was soaking up the sauce so much. I did not want it to get dry. So definitely double the sauce. If you're making 14 ounces of noodles like I did, you might even want to triple the sauce or close to it. The sauce is the boss. <laughs> Goofy. You gonna eat the rest of that? Yes, there's plenty <laughs> left over. Go get you some. We had chicken lo mein. <laughs> Real chicken lo mein. That's hard to believe. I know. All right. That's really good. I hope you enjoyed getting five recipes that we said are the best of the best that we've tried over the last few months. If you enjoyed this style of video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Thanks, y'all, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Are you ready? One more time. One more time. Y'all, every time, right before I hit record, he does that. <laughs> every single <Yeah>. time. <laughs> every time. Let's go, let's eat this. Wait. No, don't tell me to wait. Okay, y'all. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was looking for. <laughs> looking for my uh, mic it's sitting right there <laughs> leave me a comment in the below in the below <laughs> is it good <laughs> thank you goodbye have a good day mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. get out of there excuse me I need you to cooperate stay still do y'all talk to your food as you as you're making it Cause I do. You see how my mouth forms when I say bye? Yeah, I do. Bye. <laughs> God, what? Don't do that no more. Bye. Bye. Bye.